Vintage Verlander on the mound tonight strikes out a season-high nine batters, and he's got a message for Alex Cora. John Singleton hit the ball well. Kyle Tucker added another bomb. Let's talk about this on tonight's Locked on Astros. Alvarez hits a high drive center field. Veerling's back. This game is turned upside down. There's the runner. Fly ball down the right field line. Tucker comes on. Kyle Tucker. This time they finish the job. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H Town Wheelhouse Chancy. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Astros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. And we, when you are not yelling at Alex Cora, where can they find you on on the X? Well, hold on. I didn't yell at Alex Cora. That was Everybody Justin did. Verlander. No, oh, I wasn't okay, yelling yeah. out. I could care less about Alex Cora. He's a he's a whatever dude. You're in the past. Hey man, I'm H John Wheelhouse. You can find me at H John Wheelhouse on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. You can find me at Stros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Stros. All right, guys, thank you for making the Locked On Astros podcast your first listen. Whether it's on YouTube, go and subscribe to us. Go and make us your first listen. Become an everyday or somebody that listens to our podcast, well, every day. And uh, so go and subscribe to us on Apple and listen to us on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, Google, wherever you listen to your podcast. Go and check out the Locked On Astros podcast and become an everyday -er like a lot of people that are listening in the chat right now. And so go ahead and tell us what you think about this game. What do you think about Justin, Justin uh, Ver Verlander inviting Alex Cora out to dinner after the game? Something like that. Um, and there's just a lot of um, – it seemed like the Red Sox were very angry in this game. And so – this is a far cry from when they're dominating the Yankees and the Yankees have now dropped nine games in a row. This is their, the uh, longest losing streak they've had since 1982. So they are free falling, but the Astros are having to win because they are a neck and neck neck race with the Rangers and the Mariners now. And so it's going to get really there tight. In ALS. Uh, we there also, are, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. We got uh, Alvarez. Uh, he had a little, incident at his house and so he was out in lineup today it kind of involved a little shuffling of the lineup so to speak and is singleton starting to heat up well he doesn't always get a hit but when he does get a hit it's a uh, normally extra basis and michael brantley uh there was another update or clarification of what we talked about yesterday so this is some of the stuff we'll be talking about on this locked on astros podcast so brett this looked like vintage Justin Verlander in this game. Yeah, 16 swings and misses, nine of them on his four-seam fastball. I mean, he looked good. You know, when you when you comb through his numbers, you know, he was really looking. Um, he there was there was some concern about his slider, about his curveball not getting deep in the zone. Um, but with most of these swings and misses coming off his four seam, I mean, that is an excellent percentage of his 96 pitches, 60 or more four seam. 19 were curveball, 16 were slider. He did only throw one changeup. But his max velocity was 97 tonight. I mean, he looked good. You know, um, he had struck out eight last game, but didn't look great. Gave up several hits, um, gave up a few runs. And I didn't realize tonight was his first game to strike out nine hitters this season. So you love to see it. If Justin Verlander can get his four seam working the way it is, if he can get that slider, get that curveball to be to have depth in the strike zone. Where it's missing the bat of the, of the, or where it's missing the bat, where the hitter's literally swinging after it. And when he gets to that point of the baseball, the bottom falls out. Then I think you're going to see someone who can be very, very valuable, especially with a team that really has kind of had a lot of ups and downs when it comes right. to starting pitching. But Eric, really overall, this team's still performing well. And th this, this offense, we'll talk about it more throughout the show. But if this offense heats up and you even get your role players like Singleton, you know, hot, if you bring Brantley back, if you got Diaz up there hitting, if you got McCormick hitting, I really have a hard time believing that any other team out there can match what we have, especially when it comes to our playoff prowess and our experience on the field. Um, 
you know, I looked at the last the last 50 games played, the number one record in the AL or in the entire league is Seattle at 33 and 17, Baltimore 32 and 18, Houston 30 and 20. The Rangers are 25 and 25. They're 500. And so you've got the top three teams in the AL playing the top, playing the best baseball, and none of them are the Texas Rangers. I like our chances to be able to move in the first sooner rather than later. Yeah, and the Astros just have to win every game at this point that they can. I know they're not going to win every game. They're not going to just um, go on this. Win every run. series. Yeah, they every can. series. Yeah. They, 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 it'll be nice to sweep a series here and there. But uh, the Red Sox are a um, tough competitor. I know that they are not really – they're, they're – they're trying to fight into the wild card picture, but uh, I know that the Rays and the uh, the Orioles are ahead of them in terms of the AL East, but they're still a good team. They're coming off a pretty hot streak, and it's just kind of far cry how they uh, how they've been doing. And I uh, they, they I think they have ninety errors on the season. They had four errors in this game, and Devers, as good a third baseman as he is, he's he did not look good in this series so far. And the Astros have looked like a much different team than they played against the Mariners. I don't know if I don't know. I'm not going to say it was the closed door meeting. I just think that they really were. It felt like this, they're insulted. And they got slapped in the face. Uh, some it just so they're just like, yeah, let's play bit better baseball. And we see them kind of going out there and play, playing this better game. You see Kyle Tucker with that mammoth home run and everything. But Verlander just went out there with the six innings and the nine strikeouts. And I I know yeah, I think you mentioned those sixteen whiffs. Thirteen of them were on yeah. fastball. He averaged ninety five point one. Uh, the season he's been averaging 94.3. So I think that now that he's starting to settle back in with the Houston Astros, I think we're going to see more of the Justin Verlander that we saw last a year. I think this the start before was probably one of his worst starts of the season. And uh, he's probably like, yeah, I don't want to do this again. So uh, mm. he does what a veteran pitcher does and he makes the adjustment. And we saw him go out there and he just made the Red Sox look crazy. He drove Alex Cora crazy. And uh, he made even <laughs> uh, Alex Verdugo was not even at the plate. And he was arguing with the umpire about some of the pitches that the umpire was calling. And the umpire is one of the best umpires in the game. And Verdugo got run from the dugout. He was, he was calling a lot of pitches for right-handed batters off the plate strikes. He did it for the Astros as well. I I, I think they had a legitimate beef, but dude, the Red Sox made three errors tonight. They looked terrible. Rafael Devers looked. It was funny. My son was with me at the game, and and he said, he said, Dad, he said Rafael Devers looks like he's like thirteen or fourteen, like his face. He looks like a kid, and he was making mistakes like a thirteen or fourteen year old right. little leaguer tonight in the field. And when you've got when you've got your guys that aren't necessarily firing it on all on all cylinders in this game and they're struggling to score runs, those defensive mishaps and hiccups really can affect the mood of a team. We've seen it happen to the Astros at times when the defense right. hasn't been there. It really kills momentum in the game. And so you hate to see it from Boston's perspective, but you love to see it from our perspective because it helps us keep pace with the rest of the division. And it's what the Astros have done in the past. If they if they've taken advantage of these mistakes, and uh, recently the offense has been kind of stagnant, and they really haven't been taking advantage of this, and they haven't been super aggressive, like pushing uh, this stuff, the action. But that's what they've been doing the last two games. They've been kind of pushing the action, uh, especially coming back in uh, Game One versus Red Sox. And so I know that Jesse says I think the Mariners woke a sleeping giant. I know you mentioned that the other day, but um, I think that. Uh, uh, for those of y'all who are joining, uh, wondering what's going on with the thumbnail, why was Justin Verlander um, saying, uh, you know what, off uh, to Alex Cora? <laughs> and so uh, we all know that because of Cora and the Red Sox and uh, probably uh, the Astros too, um, and but they have the pitch com because of the uh, the stealing signs and everything. So uh, what they have now is the pitch com, and the pitch com wasn't working for Justin Verlander. So he was trying to get the umpire's attention, and he was just trying to say, "Hey, it's it stopped working." And so uh, the umpire had called a uh, like a pitch clock timer, so he was right. going to get a ball. 
And then Verlander started walking towards him saying, hey, uh, this thing's not working. What do you want me to do? I can't hear the pitch. And so they called that. He called the a bat boy from the dugout. He brought out the Spanish one. And so he's like, uh, no habla espanol. So uh, he couldn't use that one. So he had to go get another one. Meanwhile, Alex Cora is like, wait, I think this is a tactic. And he's like, I don't buy this. I think that Verlander is a veteran guy. And he's probably went out there like, you know what? I'm, I'm calling BS on this. And he started yelling at Verlander saying, no, I heard, I saw you shake your head or something like that. And he, and Verlander probably said, I didn't shake my head. You know what? You know what? Off. And uh, that was just classic. And it just, it just, it just shows the fire he had in this game mm -hmm. because these yeah. guys are probably friends from the 2017 world series. And, well, um, and you know, and there's, there's still a lot of respect for Cora in the clubhouse. Altuve talks highly of him when, when Carlos Correa was here, he talked highly of him. A lot of the Latin American players, I mean, they are still friends with Alex Cora. So that goes unsaid, but even friends in the game, I don't care what sport it is. I don't care if it's football, baseball, hockey, no matter what it is, you're going to be able to talk the trash that you want to talk simply right. because, you know, you're, you're, you're well aware of, of what's at hand. And if you do have all the right parts for your team and you're ready for a championship run, um, then you probably went to eBay motors because championship teams are all about getting everything they need out of every player. That's the right fit. It's the same when you go to get your you know parts for your vehicle. So the next time you need parts for your vehicle and accessories head to eBay motors. Why? Because they have eBay guaranteed fit. You can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know that your part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. So get the right parts and the right fit and get the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, exclusions apply. And the Astros do play the Red Sox Wednesday at 7, 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. Catch every pitch of the Astros hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM at search Astros. Now, Eric, we know Cora wasn't happy. We know Alex, I mean, we know that him and JV went back and forth. But you know what I was least happy about today? What? The news about Jordan Alvarez jamming his index finger in a door the day of the game. And I'm like, what do we need to do to keep Jordan Alvarez safe? Padded rooms? Do we need to put the mitts? You know, like when they slide into, you know, when they're running bases? Do, does he need to now wear mitts? This guy is, this guy's getting injury prone, Eric, and it kind of freaks me out. And it kind of scares me. Like, how are you jamming your finger in a door that I don't know? Like, like maybe it's a coincidence. But I, I want to know: a, is the yeah, door right. okay? I mean, that's a big he dude. Probably, he probably hit <laughs> it probably with his index door. finger, and he probably put it through the wooden door. Right? I'm just like, let's wrap this dude. You know those big? Have you seen those big inflated? like balls that you like go inside of and two people like hit against each other. And I, I think they're called knocker balls is, is what they're called. Maybe we need to just roll him around in one of those. Like, okay, Jordan, you can't go anywhere, get inside this. And I don't know. I'm just like, come on, Jordan, come on, big fella. Apparently it's not that big of a deal because dusty did say they plan on him playing on Wednesday, which is a good sign. Right. And so I think that uh, it's it just um, hopefully he's going to be uh, back in the lineup. I, I, they didn't answer if he was available to pinch hit in this game, but they didn't need him. The score was to a point where you didn't have to. But it did lead to a little bit of a lineup shuffle. Uh, Diaz was originally not in the lineup. And, you know, he had a lot of Astros fans being like, oh, no, Diaz just had a great game. This sucks and everything. And then you, you went ahead and had Singleton return to the lineup. He was originally going to play first base, but then you had Alvarez go ahead and exit straight stage left. And then Diaz was going to originally play uh, DH. But then somebody had the uh, epiphany. Wait, Diaz hits a lot better when he plays a position. So maybe we should go ahead and put him at first base. 
I I don't know if that's what really happened. Well, there, no, but. I mean, well, I mean, it it makes sense, you know. Eric, you and I talked about last. Look, here's the deal. I really think some of the guys listen to our show, and I, I'm not saying that to be arrogant, because it, it it seems like the things that we talk about the next day, players react to something, someone in the clubhouse says something, and it's like, and it sounds like something we talked about on the show. Again, maybe it's a super coincidence. Maybe we're just you know, hitting the nail on the head. We just keep getting the right guess. But I absolutely love where this team is. The big question, though, Eric, is when Abreu comes back. Because they're expecting him back maybe this week. When, actually, before the Boston series is over, they're expecting him back. And then Brantley comes back. What are you going to do? Because you have Chaz who's swinging a hot bat. You have Diaz who's swinging a hot bat. you got to get the professional hitter in. You're paying Abreu way too much money to be sitting when he's not injured. I mean, I guess it's a good problem to have, but at what point are we going to say this is going to be the lineup we're going to take into the playoffs? So we're going to play yeah. these guys consistently here. So yeah. we got to work it out for us because look, dude, if the Rangers lose, because right now they're they're down five to one, bottom of the six. We are a half game within first place of the AOS. Yeah. So Justin Verlander after the game said this. Alex comes out there and starts arguing that I've been shaking. He was try- trying to say that my pitch calm was working. I'm assuming he thought I was using it as a tactic. I wasn't using it as a tactic. He kind of gestured at me and said something like, you go pitch. And that's when he was like, F off. Oh, F off. <laughs> and so that's exactly what I was just thinking. I'm just like, um, I'm sure Cora just thought it was just a, oh, I don't, I don't want that ball. So I'm going to just make up something. But I don't think Verlander is that type of guy. I mean, yeah, I would say that's a veteran move, but I think he's a little too proud for that. But uh, he also said that between the last start and this one, I felt like something, I really kind of found something mechanically that answered a lot of questions for me. And that's what I said earlier too. I feel like uh, he probably found something after that start where he got rocked and he's become the vintage Verlander. So I think Verlander is exactly where he needs to be. Now, if somebody could just fix Framer Valdez and Christian Javier, we will be all happy. Well, I just I just think things are going in the right place yeah. at the right time in the right order. Um, and someone is asking me, is Brantley really coming back? Yes, the the indications in the reports are that he will join the team when they go to Detroit because they they have four games here. They go to Detroit, then they go to Boston for three games. But I cannot wait until mid-September till we start talking about because I want to know like I kind of want to see into the future I want to know where they where the Astros will be in this division in mid-September to me if the Astros have a cushion of four or five games and that's very possible over the Rangers and the Mariners the Rangers and the Mariners play each other seven times in the last 10 games of the season right that's huge and they play us three times in September September is going to be an absolute bloodbath when it comes to like competition for the AL West. Um, but, you know, look, Singleton got the two hits. Eric, what does Singleton do when he gets up to bat? Um, he does bat flips when he um, hits the doubles. But like I said before the show, um, he doesn't always get a hit. But when he gets a hit, it's an extra base hit. But that's right. Um, yeah, he's been struggling recently. I think he had a single, actually. Um, but he had the two home runs. And I believe he had a single. Now he had the two doubled game and one of them he had a the bat flip and it was a great hit um i don't know i, I know i put on there is singleton heating up i i don't know if he's heating up i don't know if he's going to be given a lot of playing time because right. uh, i do want to kind of address uh abreu i did kind of skip him but this is what dusty baker said about abreu so this might you might want to close your ears guys this is a little cringy so he said i'm hoping that we get the abreu that we signed that would be huge Huge defensively, which you can tell we've missed some, and offensively, big time. I mean, eventually, hopefully he'll be back every day. Initially, because he's been out, no rehab assignment, his body, it would most likely be more of a every other thing until he feels right physically and timing-wise. So, in other words, he's coming back likely, but he's not going to be playing every day. So, you're still going to be seeing um, Singleton playing first base. and I- Go I actually like that. Mm-hmm. I thought I thought you were going to tell me he was going to be playing every day, regardless, no matter what. 
I don't mind a Bray you playing every other day, Eric. Neither right. should you. You should be happy with that. We should right. be happy with that. That means Diaz will get more chances at first as well. And yeah. if Diaz is hitting better than Singleton, I'm sorry. Look, if Singleton was hitting the cover off the ball, then I think he – I just – like, why was Diaz out of the lineup originally anyways? The dude hit a home run. He's hot. He's swinging a hot bat. Oh, people are like, oh, he played four games in a row. He's 24 years old. He's not 40. He's not He's not Ricky Henderson trying to come back at 51. He's not Julio Franco trying to play until he's 60. He's a 24-year-old catcher who hasn't even played a whole season. So he played four games in a row. Who cares? Like you said last night, like I said last night, take the training wheels off. And look, if you're ready to go watch the Astros in style with great wings, and have great brew, you need to go to Hooters. Why? Because Hooters makes you happy. Let me tell you, every week, Monday, they have buy one, get one wings. Tuesday, $9.99 burgers and fries. If you're listening to me right now, Wednesdays is buy one, get one boneless wings. Go check that out while you watch the Astros play. And then Monday through Friday, they have happy hour from 2 to 7. And from 10 p.m. to close, $3 Blue Moon drafts are there or $9.99 Michelob Ultra Pitchers. No matter the occasion, Hooters is ready to make you happy. Starting September 7th in NASA, they have every Thursday night after Thursday night football, karaoke, and happy hour till close, so go check that out. They will have several chances for you to take bus trips to Astros games, whether you're in whether you're in Baytown, whether you are in Humble, whether you are in Katy or Galveston, Pearland, Pasadena, anywhere in between. Hooters is there to make you happy. Go hang out with the boys at Locked on Astros Hangout. Watch the Astros with great grub and brews. Ask them for their feature beers on tap. And make sure that you listen to the Astros if you can't watch them play or go to the game. On Wednesday night, 7, 10 p.m. Central Standard Time, catch every pitch of the Astros hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Search Astros. All right, so I may have to check out that um, karaoke at Hooters. Uh, that should be fun. Oh, that's uh, dude, Thursday night. Dude, when – because I was talking to Rosie, who's the GM at the NASA Hooters. When she said that, my the first words before she finished, I was like, Eric is there. So I, I've already got you there <laughs> September 7th, Thursday night football. So if you don't show up, that that's going to be on you, Ricky Bobby. That's going to be on you. All right, don't put that on me, Ricky Bobby. But um, <laughs> I definitely, the, this is the first time the Astros have actually put out, the, go off your last conversation about DS. This is the first uh, time they the Astros have had the lineup of Diaz, Myers, McCormick, and Alvarez in the starting lineup on Monday. And the Astros uh, won that game uh, big time. Uh, the, the Astros are now 7-2 and two when they have Diaz, Myers, McCormick, and Alvarez in the lineup. And so uh, go off your kind of what you're saying is why not start those four guys? I mean, you're going to have the regulars, of course, but why not start those guys more often? I know – you have Diaz, um, McCormick starting a lot more as catcher. Um, then you have Myers. Um, you don't. So it's just like, why not have that? Those guys at, put your best lineup out there if you know you're seven and two, and most of those times you have scored seven runs in five of those nine games. So go and put your best lineup out there. And uh, so like we saw on Monday night and a lot of people are like, this is not the ask. This is not Dusty Baker's best lineup in today's game. And they went out there and scored seven runs. Why? Because you have the Astros are getting hot. Altuve did basically nothing in this game. His hitting streak stop on base streak stop. But you had a lot of contribution across the board. McCormick didn't get hit, but he uh, got a stolen base. Dubon had a uh, – oh, we haven't even talked about Dubon basically outrunning Devers uh, to home plate. So there's a bunt by Martin Maldonado. And so uh, I believe he got thrown out, if I remember correctly. But uh, Dubon basically went third to – sorry, second to uh, third. And by the time um, – he saw that nobody was covering home plate. Devers saw the same thing. So they were basically at the same thing, and they kind of like shoved each other, and they were both trying to haul butts back to home plate because Devers knew exactly what Dubon was going to do. And Dubon, um, he kind of did the inside track uh, while uh, Devers kind of ran outside. Uh, Dubon kind of ran on this side and scored that run. At the time, I mean, it didn't matter at the end, but that made it three to nothing at that time. 
Yeah, no, that was that was a good play. Um, yeah, Maldonado needs to bunt as much as possible. Um, it was a beautiful bunt. I, I was there at the game. I was like, wow, he literally put that ball down the line. Right. And that was heads up base running. You know, base running has been a thing that to me, I don't get why this team seems to struggle with late jumps or making ill advised advances to second or third, killing a rally. You know, you have Jordan up to bat and the guy in front of him tries to extend a double and do a triple and gets thrown out. I just I'm I'm really baffled at times at the base running mental errors we make. So if we can clean little things like up like that, I think those things are going to matter in the playoffs. I, I mean, yeah. because if we can ultimately get back to a World Series, I don't see us playing anybody else but the Braves. And that team absolutely is a killer of a team. 206 plus run differential, 80 wins already. I mean, that team's foaming at the mouth. They want another title. Ronald Acuna Jr. is fighting with Matt Olson for MVP in the NL. And so it's these little things. It's pitchers going longer in the innings. It's putting together an optimal lineup. It's putting yourself in the best position to win. And at some point, you got to get close to the playoffs and you got to quit dickering with the lineup. You got to start going, okay, we're going to have this guy in this spot, this guy in that spot. And on this day, if we have this pitching matchup, we're going to have this lineup for sure. Have two or three variations of the lineup and go with that the rest of the way. Now, that's what I would do. I've never managed a major league team, but I think we need more consistency to find out what our true identity is before we hit the postseason. All right. I have some new intro music for uh, Rafael Montero. You ready for it? Oh, my God, man, he's had a rough year. He's been pitching well. <laughs> he didn't do great tonight, but, man, they're, they're going hard. Oh, hey, get this. A, a live update. Let me just tell y'all, an extra promo for Hooters. The GM at the Baytown era Hooters just told me that if you mentioned Locked on Astros when you go into Hooters in Baytown, you will get free fried pickles with your dinner. You'll get a free appetizer, fried pickles. So mentioned locked on Astros at the Baytown area Hooters. I'm going to get some other restaurants on, on board with that. And I'll let y'all know tomorrow night show. So free fried pickles at the Baytown Hooters. The manager Shay did that. So thank you, Shay. We appreciate you. Okay. What about if you mentioned Rafael Montero? Hey, I'm a Rafael Montero fan. Uh, that, that game was a little too, I, mean, I know Montero the Astros had big leagues. Not, it's like, yeah. come on. This we is want called this game on Astros. <laughs> oh, no, I know. I was like, please, I want to start planning for the post show. I'm so tired this week. But look, man, baseball is going to baseball. Look, Eric, this team to come back and win these two games. The Red Sox have been surging a little bit. They had been playing better. I know the, I mean, the Yankees are, gosh, the Yankees are so bad. They're literally calling up every top prospect. Like, I, um, Aaron Judge has struck out six times in his last nine at bats. I, I mean, they are in a complete free fall right now. They are going completely catatonic. Their fan base is they're trying to do like a boycott where they're not buying tickets in certain sections. They want to get 15,000 fans and not show up in certain sections where they normally are to show how upset they are with the team. I mean, they're kind of the Oakland A's of the East right now. They're just they are in shambles. And the Astros are looking up. The Rangers are coming back down to, to a level. And I'm telling you, Eric, mark my words. I think this division comes down to us and the Mariners. And I think it comes down to us having to stave off a hard-charging Mariners because if Julio Rodriguez is leading that team and he's hot, and then you've got Castillo, you got, I mean, Gilbert, the Mariners don't play around. And they're out for blood this year. So it's going to make for a very adventurous end of the season. And you as Astros fans should want that. Okay, I, I'm, we may have already touched on it, but Michael Brantley is going to uh, play tonight. He was 0 for 4 uh, playing. I believe he played left field again, um, but he's going to play again on Wednesday and should join the team on the road. So that should be uh, – we should – I think we're playing in Detroit. So that should be a um, – we should see him rejoin the Astros is what I'm trying to say. We should see Abreu kind of return back to the lineup as well. So we're going to get some of the big veteran bats back. And uh, how much they play, I don't know. Uh, I think they're going to take it really slow with uh, Michael Brantley specifically. But somebody in this AAA game uh, today, Spencer Arrigetti, six innings, two hits allowed, two walks, three strikeouts. 
His ERA is 4.40 in AAA, but we know what this kid can do. And I think that there's a possibility if the Astros need a arm, a starter, I know they can call him up and he could be somebody that can have a surprising impact in the 2023 playoffs. Yeah, I, I just think that we're getting hot at the right time. I think we're looking to to really see what this team can do. And look, if everybody in this offense is healthy and if everybody in this offense performs up to par, this Eric could be one of the most powerful and one of the most one of the best offensive teams that that makes a postseason for the Astros. They really could be. They're that good. You have Kyle Tucker, who's hitting like an MVP. You have Jordan Alvarez, who's recording RBIs at a record pace. You have Chas McCormick, who's got an over 900 OPS. You get Yiner Diaz, who is basically about to break the catcher home run record. Um, you, you've got Peña that started to hit lately. Altuve's been hitting the cover off the ball. Alex Bregman's hitting better. I mean, I mean, stop me when you can, because... This lineup, if if you bring back Brantley and you bring back Abreu and and they're even eighty percent of what they can do, yeah, it's, it's going to be hard for me to see a lineup that can go against them day in and day out, toe to toe. I just really, really think that if this team gets going in the right direction, that it's going to be hard to stop them. I think I would have to say that twenty seventeen lineup was pretty good. Um, I think that there's some. There's, there's been some teams that the Astros have had that have had some pretty uh, good lineups with Springer, Correa, and uh, some of the, the original uh, the guys. But, yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying. So we'll have to see. But I think what the playoffs is going to really hinge on is the starting pitching. And Justin Verlander set a tone right now. And J.P. France like has been setting a tone. So now it's, it's up to the other three or four guys to go ahead and uh, take it up to an, another level and go ahead and follow Justin Verland. That's the reason why you brought him. He's the leader. And so we'll see what happens. So uh, in tomorrow's game, uh, who do we got? Uh, I had it up earlier, but I went back to today's game. It is – I know we're playing the Red, Red Sox again, but it's going to be Jose Arquiti versus Chris Sale. Chris Sale has missed a lot of time this year, but he's still 5-3 and three with 4.50 ERA. Arquiti is 2-3 and three with a 5.21 ERA. Watch this be a one to nothing game. <laughs> I just when you have I hope not high ERA is like this. I hope we shell Chris Sale like we've done so in the past. Um, we love hitting Chris Sale. We love taking baseballs into the Crawford boxes against Chris Sale. So let's oh, just Al imagine Tube has a, a home run against him in twenty four yeah. bats. And so hey, let's do it. Let's do it. So look, right. Eric, this has been a great show, dude. Um, great fun. Two games with the Red Sox coming off of being swept things are looking better things are looking up Brantley is coming back soon Abreu's coming back apparently Alvarez is going to be back too as well wrap yourself in bubble wrap be safe out there kids don't jam your fingers indoors and make sure that you make Locked on Astros your first listen every day I'm H. John Wilhouse he's Eric Van Heisman for your only daily Astros podcast subscribe to our channel and share with your friends about our show and as always Go Strohs. And we need somebody to fix Alvarez's door. I'm really concerned about that door. I mean, uh, do you put uh, Home Depot. in it or Wood, Wood Home Depot or Lowe's. Okay. All right. Cool. Oops. We're